everybody. It's Pat at Dancing Moon Travel, and right here with us, as always, is Kevin Gregg, our uh, uh, marketing director, who is uh, going to be running all of our technology and, and uh, putting up whatever images and things. Uh, we are excited about our guest today. We have Jason and Lorena Bateman joining us talking about Costa Rica and wellness vacations. So uh, we are excited to welcome Jason and Lorena here with us from CostaRica.org. I'm going to uh, welcome them and then I'm going to bow out and work behind the scenes. All right. Hey, guys, welcome. Buenos dias. Good morning. <laughs> Buenos dias. We are so happy to have you here with Let's Talk Travel. And, and before we really get into the meat of this, before we really start, uh, Kevin, could you cue up that that cool little Costa Rica video that we that we have? <laughs> Well, that was really, you can really see why Costa Rica is such a popular destination. Uh, and, and you know, it does, I, I think it just really offers something for every traveler uh, and and every interest. But uh, guys, today we, we wanted to focus a little bit of our, well, probably most of our, our focus to keep it on the wellness travel market, which is such a growing niche in the travel industry. Uh, help us understand what is it about Costa Rica that helps make it so attractive to the wellness traveler? Yeah, definitely. And, and especially today that, you know, we're, we're facing this worldwide crisis. I think Costa Rica is, is shining as a destination that will not only attract people searching wellness, but also, um, you know, travelers from around the world. There's just so many things that make it special. Um, and part of the reason why I think it's so special is most of the hotels that, that are in Costa Rica are small eco lodges. They're not huge resorts. Um, they, they really encourage social distancing and, and allow people to reconnect with nature. And for me, I, I think that's wellness. I mean, it doesn't have to be people who could stand on their heads doing yoga or, or do these very complicated poses or vegans. It's really about people who want to reconnect with nature in a peaceful tropical setting. And I think many people can relate to that, not just you know, hardcore yogis or, or, or hippies, <laughs> perhaps. Right, right. So uh, you, you kind of touched a little bit how, how would a wellness vacation differ from just a regular garden variety vacation in Costa Rica? What would be some of the differences? Yeah. Um, and, and I think of wellness as, as really being kind of holistic as well. I mean, I studied anthropology in the university and and that brought me to Costa Rica in the first place. I did a study abroad program and I love including culture in our packages as well. 
Uh, we do cooking classes. We take people to to coffee plantations. We we do dinner shows where they can see the the typical dances and hear the music. So I, I really think immersing yourself and seeing different culture is, is also part of of you know uh, being a complete human being and 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 the wellness packages also should include some some element of culture and interacting with the local people very true you're not you're not sacrificing that cultural immersion uh in order to get uh, a, a healthy focus on, on your vacation yeah aside from that i mean costa rica is a tropical paradise uh, both my wife and i are are vegetarians and there is so much variety in in fruits and vegetables and the you know we've we've taken people to local markets where they can interact with people and see the exotic the guanabanas and the mamones chinos and 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 all that costa rica has to offer with plant-based natural food and um, and and the the cooking in Costa Rica, the food that's that's included in a lot of these resorts is 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 really healthy, organic, uh, down to earth food that um, that you know it doesn't have to be a yoga retreat to, to offer this to, to people's guests. Yeah. Wow, that that is beautiful. Uh, that presentation there. So uh, definitely cuisine and, and the dining and, and healthier f dining options is, is great. The, the uh, meditation, yoga, uh, relaxation just can, can be a big part of uh, just having some downtime is a big part of, of uh, a, a wellness kind of vacation to have that, that time to just, decompress and and my goodness uh talk about stress this year if anybody uh probably the whole world needs a a good de-stressing type of vacation this year whether you're normally into the wellness thing or not um so things like yoga and meditation uh these these just kind of seem to grow in it Every year you hear more about these. Uh, people are just desperately looking for, for ways to take the stress out of their lives. And, and I, I see that, that, uh, uh, I, and I see, I know that you guys offer some, some really unique itineraries and suggested tour, uh, that, that focus on, on this sort of, of thing with the, with the yoga and meditation and, and so forth, all built into the vacation. I'm wondering, uh, could we just take some time to look? I was looking specifically at that, uh, your eight day, uh, wellness yoga and surf vacation that just really looked fabulous kevin can you show us that itinerary uh yeah so this kind of hits the highlights of several of the main uh areas of, of costa rica that that uh really give people a great overview of the country uh, can you just kind of walk us through some of some of the experiences that that a person would have on that itinerary? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, th this particular itinerary is about a week trip, and you know, in Costa Rica we have two airports. There's the San Jose Airport and the Liberia Airport, and we can set up packages for for either airport and and create custom itineraries that go throughout the country. This this particular package that that hotel picture that you were showing at the beginning is the Grano de Oro and I love this property. Um not only is it a restored mansion in the heart of San Jose, it's got this incredible garden interior garden where there's one of the best restaurants in the capital as well. Um, and not to mention that this, this hotel is also very socially responsible. Um, they have some incredible programs where they're working with women to get them out of 
out of prostitution, out of drugs, and and they're promoting this sort of sustainable, responsible tourism, which I think makes Costa Rica very, very special as well. Um, the first destination after the 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 capital, after flying into the capital, is going mm -hmm. to the, the fabulous Arenal volcano. That is an area where I mean that is just a breathtaking part of Costa Rica. Yeah, and we're looking right now at the Nayara Hotel. And Nayara is actually a group of three resorts. There's the, the original Nayara, which I can tell that it is by all the orange de decor that they have. And, and then there's the Nayara Springs, which is an upscale adults-only section of the property. And now they have the new Nayara Tented Camp for for people looking for something really unique, uh, upscale glamping experience. And wow. Both Loren and I went to Nayara and we had an amazing yoga class right there wow. on site. And the, the Palapa roof bungalow where they do the yoga, the, the ashram, I believe it's called, is um, just surrounded by rainforest, and you really just take in the sounds of the of the birds, the the the, the, the insects, the winds, you know, the nature. Um, Costa Rica, you know, you don't have to do yoga, even though you might want to experience it on your trip. Um, it really pushes you to have that contact with nature, and there's incredible spas throughout the country. Um, Nayara has one. We're looking at the hot springs right now at the Tabacon Resort. Now these are world famous hot springs and, and the thermal waters with the volcanic sediment are known to be rejuvenating and, uh, and, and have properties that heal your skin. And just being immersed by these tropical gardens and these hot springs at the base of a active volcano is um, just something that takes you out of your daily life and 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 opens your eye to the beauty around you. I mean, I can just visualize myself just walking through this beautiful rainforest area here by and hearing the sounds of that that river and those those little waterfalls, those mini waterfalls and, and cascades. Oh, it just takes your breath away. It just relaxes me just thinking about it. There's literally dozens of, of hot springs pools scattered throughout the property off of this natural river. And there's also one of the top spas in Latin America. I think it's rated number one spa in Latin America. Loren and I actually had a couple's massage right next to the river at the Tabacone Resort. And it still is up there on our list of the number one spa massages we've ever had. Wow, talk about de-stressing. That would do it, wouldn't it? <laughs> right? Um, and, and just these, these hardwood uh, palapa roof ashrams where people are, are practicing yoga and, and, and they're just open air so that the wind comes in and the sound of the rainforest. And, and you don't have to be. I'm not an expert yoga a practitioner, and nor is Lorena, even though she can do some some head headstands that I can't do. <laughs> um, it, it's just just being there, just reconnecting with your breath, with yourself. That that is so rejuvenating. So, so. you you don't have to be a, a, a an expert. You can you can go and do at your own level, even if that's a beginner level. Definitely. And these, these places offer classes for, for all types of people and, and not just yoga. They, their Pilates is becoming important. There's the meditation classes um, and there's different types of flow yogas, which are really gentle that, um, that, that nearly anyone can do. And, and we've seen that the, the quality of instructors in Costa Rica has, has grown exponentially. Um, uh, Co Costa Rican people are so educated, so friendly, um, and tourism has been a big part of their economy for so long that that there are so many professionals down there to help guide you through and so this experience. 
And, and oh, there's that beautiful volcano. Yeah. Uh, that's the Arnal volcano. It's um, it stopped erupting lava um, about 10 years ago. I remember when I first moved to Costa Rica back in 1999, the volcano had lava coming down the side and you can see the, the charred side of the, the mountain um, where that used to come down. It's still very active in the sense that there's hot springs around the volcano. And it's kind of like the adventure epicenter of Costa Rica and, and for nature lovers, you know, so if you're not into zip lining or waterfall repelling or whitewater rafting, we can set up nature tours where you can do a safari float through the rainforest or hanging bridges. That's what I love about, about working with you guys. It's all, it's what we like to do too. It's, it's customized. It's, it's all, uh, you know, there's all of this availability, all these many options, but but you choose and customize the the experiences to suit the per the traveler who's who's going. It's not one size fits all. It's all customized and and uh, arranged to suit your preferences and activity level. So I I love that. Um, yeah, we have a lot of birding clients who wake up, you know, super early at 4, mm -hmm. 4, 4 a.m. To, to go look for quetzals or, or hummingbirds. Or Costa Rica has over 960 species of birds and it's become an epicenter for, for birding enthusiasts. and uh, Photographers. There's so many different levels of appeal for Costa Rica. People who, who love, uh, you know, the dining and, and the, the fresh food. The, the seafood is legendary. Um, so, so after you moved to the the uh, Arano area, and I never say that very well, but uh, then then uh, what's next on the agenda? Ooh, look at that! That looks lovely, and it looks so healthy. The ceviche, you know, <laughs> with plantain chips. With plantain chips, and Lorena, Lorena's Costa Rican. We actually met down there, <laughs> and um, you know, now we work together, and she helps. You know, I, I do a lot of the vacation planning and then she helps the clients afterwards and works with a lot of the providers, you know, with her perfect Spanish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when we work with you on planning a trip, you are, are really taking our clients to, to a place that you have called home. Yeah. I mean, I'm originally from Colorado, but in 99, I, I mentioned I studied anthropology. I also studied Spanish. I did a year abroad in Costa Rica and I just fell in love with the country and uh, started teaching English and, and working on a blog at that point, which became CostaRica.org. And, and in 2004, we, we became a travel agency and we have an office in the capital of San Jose. And um, I wish they could jump on the call with us as well today. We have a couple of girls in the office who manage the reservations, the operations. Um, we're on call 24-7 in country for our guests. We love working with providers like that because uh, we know that our clients, we entrust them into good hands where you guys know what you're doing and you're there if, if the, you know, the un, it's not normal for, for there to be a problem, but, but things do happen. And you're right there to jump on it if so, if something goes awry. We love that. We love how we can entrust our clients to that kind of, of uh, uh, provider. So uh, after we leave the Arenal area, then then uh, you take people to the coast. Yes, that's on this right. particular itinerary. And we're going to talk about not two different beach areas today um, that are really become wellness um, epicenters. I would say for Costa Rica. And my first one is, is probably my preference. It's the Santa Teresa area. Um, I, I love this area. I learned how to surf here. I used to camp out on the beach every weekend when I was teaching English 20 years ago. Um, this place is really special. And the coastline is just fantastic with tropical palm trees that line the coast. And there's, there's a few really special um, retreats that are beachfronts that um, offer daily yoga classes, healthy, fresh fruits and, and, and food, um, just amazing places to, to disconnect from it all. Fabulous. And, and you, you hit then the uh, 
uh, Tortuga Island for some snorkeling. Uh, and then uh, day eight, you've got your departure on that particular itinerary. In Costa Rica, if you look at the map, there's two peninsulas. And this one, this beach area um, that we're, we're talking about is on the Nicoya Peninsula. And to get there, you go across that Gulf of Nicoya. And in that Gulf, there's the island of Tortuga. And that's a great place to go snorkeling. We do take people there. Even just getting to Santa Teresa is such an amazing experience because you, you take the boat ride, the ferry across the Gulf. Sometimes you'll see whales, dolphins, sea turtles along the way. Um, it's it's an amazing part of the country. It's still a little bit off the beaten path because it, it takes a little bit extra effort to get there. So, um, But I think it's well worth it. There's a lot of famous people that, that have houses here. Actually, on my 40th birthday, I went to a party at Mel Gibson's house on Santa wow. Teresa. <laughs> so, that is pretty special. Right? He calls Santa Teresa his home. Um, you'll oftentimes run into stars. We've, we've heard of Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Brady, Giselle. All these people are, are frequently frequenting this area because they know how beautiful and how special it is. And not to mention, this is also really important, Nicoya is known as a blue zone. And for those who don't know what a blue zone is, there's a, a couple of them scattered throughout the world, but it's a place where people live extraordinary amounts of time. They have the highest um, age. Like lifespan. Yeah, lifespan. And, and, and I think Nicoya is really special because of the hard work, the, the nature, the, the food that people eat, the typical rice and beans, the fruits and vegetables. People just live here a very long time. And not to mention Costa Rica is also rated one of the happiest countries in the world, which definitely affects health. Being yeah, healthy. for certain, you, you know, that, that uh, uh, well-being and happiness that that mindset definitely plays a part in in longevity and mental health and every everything. So Jason, we, so we've kind of explored the the tour option with the three stops. Some people, uh, some of our clients would rather just go someplace and plug in and and stay there for for the span of their vacation, be it five or eight or or fourteen, whatever days. I I love this Bodhi Tree Resort. I've been looking at that and kind of drooling over it. It, it is so exquisite. Tell, tell us, a, can you give us an overview of that property? Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, if, if our clients decided they wanted to come down and, and stay at that property, what, what would they experience? Yeah, and this is the second beach area that is up and coming for wellness, for yoga, the first one was Santa Teresa on the Nicoya Peninsula. And we didn't mention it, but there are a couple of resorts there like Flor Blanca, there's Pranamar Villas, there's Tropico Latino. There's several places that offer daily yoga classes and, and make that area extra special. But the second beach area where you're referring to now with the Bodhi Yoga Retreat is called Nosara. And Nosara is accessible very easily from the second airport, which is uh, Liberia Airport. Um, it's about an hour and a half to two hours from the Liberia Airport. Once again, very worth the drive and the, and the effort taken to get there. And, and that, that is really, I mean, that's seeing the countryside. That's, that's like a tour. So it, it's not like think you should think about just time wasted while you're getting to the resort. This is your... your getting some cultural immersion and an overview of the country. So it, it's, it, it is an integral part that transfers an integral part of your experience, really. I'm really glad you mentioned that because we do a lot of uh, work to make sure that our, our transportation providers are the best in their areas, that they have their insurances up to date, that they're modern air conditioned vans, that they'll make stops along the way. If you see a troop of monkeys on the side of the road, they'll stop so you can take pictures, you know? Or if there's a fruit stand and you, you see that they're, they're opening up fresh coconuts so you can drink the coconut water. 
or get some fresh mangoes. You know, you can make these stops along the way with your driver. And, and they love to share about their country. So it's a, it's a great experience interacting with, with a Costa Rican and, and having these drives to get to where you need to. Yeah. So you have handpicked people to, to uh, every step of the way to, to keep guests engaged and, and uh, uh, they're experiencing things from, uh, you know, from, from the locals' point of view, getting that, that uh, uh, cultural immersive experience with that. That is very special. Everything from the moment they arrive to the moment they leave will have a sign with their name on it. We'll help them get into the van so that their trip will begin. Um, a lot of people think, oh, the transportation's not, you know, part of the trip, but it really is part of the experience. And and part of those emergency phone calls we get usually are when people leave their cell phone or their hats or, or some jacket or a purse in the van and we'll have We'll help them track it down so that it doesn't get lost. Also, if the flight is delayed, if they are not arriving maybe two two hours later, we will be there waiting, making sure to be there until they arrive and we will take them to the hotel center. And that's very important because flights get delayed. We all know that things happen with international travel, so good point. So anyway, uh, back to the Bodhi tree that we were talking about. I love these little rabbit trails that we get off on. <laughs> right? Really special place in Nosara. And, and not the only one. There's a number of yoga retreats like Harmony. Um, there's the new Gilded Ar Iguana. There's several properties which are, are popping up in Nosara, which has become also a haven for expats, you know, who are looking to, to live in, in, a, in a more natural setting. Now, this area of Costa Rica is known as Guanacaste. It's the northern Pacific coast. And but previously, we were looking at Nicoya. Um, and, and also, it's known for its legendary surf, just like Santa Teresa. So surf and yoga, um, being outside, tend to, to be really typical for what Costa Rica offers. And the Bodhi uh, yoga retreat, well, although I must admit, I have not been there yet. I have, they're relatively new. They are a, a, only a couple of years old. Um, they are famous in the area, and they offer these more like retreat style um, settings, you know, where you can sign up for a course for, for a week. And they have instructors that come from around the world. And and give courses there. So if somebody wanted to do like a yoga retreat or something, this would be a great place for them to plug in with, with maybe a, a, a known uh, person who, who's a, an instructor that they might have actually heard of, somebody who they, they might be able to find so something like that at this, re this resort. So Definitely. I mean, they have calendars of, of, of events and they have, you know, speakers and instructors coming in from around the world. They also offer some unique kind of like dorm style accommodations, even though it is a high end um, property, they do offer more of this, the, the retreat style atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. So, so say if we, we had uh, uh, like a girlfriend's getaway that somebody had four or five friends and they wanted to come together and do, do oh. yo a yoga re retreat with their girlfriends, this would be a great place for something like that, for them to come and plug in and, and uh, have, have a health and wellness yoga retreat for a uh, girl's getaway kind of thing. Definitely. I mean, if they wanted something structured like that, I mean, we oftentimes recommend properties that offer daily yoga classes, maybe once, twice, or three times a day. Um, and they can decide if they want to take a class or not. But if they are looking for something really structured with, you know, uh, a schedule and everything like that, then, then there are retreat options. We've also worked with instructors and people who want to lead their own retreats. We've had a couple of, of people bring not only yoga groups, we've had um, fitness groups where they're, they're coming to, to incorporate fitness in part of their, their lives. So they're using the Palapa Yoga Studio to, to learn how to stretch, to learn how to do some basic fitness. Right. 
it would be a great thing for for a small corporate group that that wants to bring their their leaders to to uh, kind of you know help them de stress after all they've been through this year. Now I'm mindful of the clock here. We're already at thirty minutes. It's it goes so fast. But I wanted to touch on before we close out. Uh, what what about Costa Rica as far as receiving visitors now and the COVID crisis? What's the status of things there right now? Is it hard? To, do do you have to jump through a lot of hoops? Well, actually, they've really lessened the restrictions. Just recently, on November first, they have opened their borders for tra travelers from around the world. And um, previously, they required a COVID test to enter, but now that is no longer a requirement as well. Um, Wonderful. The only thing that's required to enter Costa Rica these days is that you have travel insurance, you know, that covers you in case you were to get sick in country. But having travel insurance, you know, I think is 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 going to be the new norm. That's an essential anyway. When I, I always tell our clients, when you leave the shores of the U.S., you need to cover your trip with that insurance. So a valid passport and yep. travel insurance. And, and uh, you're good to go. Um, That's correct. Very few countries need a visa. The U.S. and Canada are not one of those. Most people from Europe do not need a visa. Um, we help guests that, that you know, are coming from India or different countries that perhaps need some sort of special visa requirement. And, and just make sure that that passport's not expiring within 90 days. Some people get a surprise when they... They look at their passports and, oh, my gosh, it's about to expire. So yeah. um, it needs to be valid. You will be issued a 90-day tourist visa upon entry into the country. So your, your passport needs to be valid. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Well, Jason and Lorena, I so appreciate you coming on board. Uh, you know, we've covered the wellness aspect of travel. I think that we'll probably be be having you back again as guests to talk about some of the other uh, uh options that, that Costa Rica offers for for uh, uh, people who have different kinds of interests. It, it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful destination. Yeah. Welcome back, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> I, oh, I kind of lost Lorena there. Let me. Over here, Lorena. There, there, there we go. There we go. Oh, my, my little sloth I got here. Too. Oh, gosh. I love sloths. There's just something. I love to see them hanging up in the trees. Right. Uh, I just get so excited. And you see that in Costa Rica. It's a great place to see wildlife. We actually have an adopted sloth in Costa Rica. <laughs> His name is Chicles, bubblegum in Spanish. <laughs> And uh, you can see him at one of the, the wildlife sanctuaries that there are down there. This is one called Kids Saving the Rainforest in Mount Antonio. I love that. I love that. Well, guys, it has been so special to have you on here. I'm so excited about the wellness travel market in general and Costa Rica in particular. So we're looking forward to sending some clients that way where they can relax and refresh and, and decompress from all that 2020 has, has visited upon us. Right. We all need a vacation. I think it's the best way to celebrate life and things going back to normal yeah. is to have something to look forward to. And, 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 to and get it's something got to look forward to. And then when you return, you have lifetime memories. So yes, yes. <laughs> well, thanks again. We appreciate you so much. Great job today. And guys, if you're listening to us, stay tuned for next week. Uh, we're going to be talking about the cruise industry again next week. So uh, we hope that you will be able to join us then and look for more information on. Kevin, tell us quickly about, about the new uh, trivia game that you have put together. Uh, well, yeah, it's uh, we're having a pop quiz uh, on our Dancing Moon Travel Facebook page. Uh, it will run from Wednesday to Friday and to answer our questions and be eligible to win a, a prize or two. Uh, you need to watch, uh, this, uh, this, uh, presentation here today. And we're going to pull some questions from some of the things that Jason talked about. Very good. So that's something new that we're doing. Thanks again, everybody. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you both. It was fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Pura vida. <laughs>